So we've looked at a situation where we have a beam of wood and we apply a constant load to this beam of wood and that beam will deflect as a result of that load and I'll just put the load like that and that's supported on these two pivot points there. Um, of course if we remove the load the wood will return to its original shape. So that reversible process is referred to as elastic behaviour but if we apply a load to a piece of wood I'm going to get rid of that pen because it doesn't work anymore um, and we leave it there so we're applying a load for a long period so that would be what we would call an instantaneous load when the wood when the load is removed from the wood we end up with some permanent deformation there's some recovery but not total recovery and that type of behaviour is referred to viscoelastic behaviour and we can model this with a diagram which looks a bit like this somewhat analogous to an electric circuit. Here we have something called a dash pot and here we have something called a spring. So you can apply a load to that and what is going to happen that dash pot is can be thought of as a cylinder which has got oil in it and a very small hole. So when you push on that, the oil will very slowly go through that hole and when you pull on it, the oil will go in the other direction. But it has a, a friction effect on the operation of this spring. If we just have a spring like that and we apply a load to the spring, the spring gets longer and we let the load go, it returns to its original shape. So that mimics the elastic. A dash pot, if we apply a load to a dash pot, it will just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and will never stop unless something like a spring stops it. So that represents something that's viscous. So things like treacle, of course, are viscous and will continue to flow without any stop, whereas of course something that's elastic, something like elastic band, a piece of steel has elasticity. But wood has this combination of these two properties, this visco-elastic behaviour. So the dash pot acts like friction and the spring is something that just um, acts to resist the load. So the load, uh, whatever the load is, will continue to extend that object until the resistance of the spring. As you stretch the spring, more and more energy goes into stretching it and eventually the load that you're applying is balanced out by the resistive force of that spring and what the dash pot does is affects how quickly that changes so if we apply something very quickly we can get an elastic behavior but if we apply it slowly then um, we end up with this permanent deformation uh, for those of you that know a lot more about this than I do of course the way I've explained that is not is rather over simplistic I have to say but it's the principle I'm trying to introduce here so if we apply a load for a long time we end up with this permanent deformation and that is related to this viscous behaviour of the wood. So if we apply a load 
for a long period of time to a piece of wood, we end up with this permanent deformation. And if we apply a load for a short period of time, we end up with this elastic behaviour. And these two types of behaviour can be modelled using this dash pot and spring, or this spring. And unfortunately I've drawn that one under there, and actually this one belongs to that sort of behaviour. But the dash pot and spring represents uh, the duration of load, where the dash pot actually acts as a friction on the behaviour of this spring. So we get slow deformation, and then when we release the load, we get this permanent deformation, and only a little bit of uh, returning to the original shape. So it would take a very long time for this to return to the original shape. And actually with wood, uh, for a long period of time, uh, that deformation does become permanent. So it depends on how long the load is applied for. And that sort of behaviour is referred to as duration of load. And the dash pot and spring model is only an approximation to the reality. And that is a vast oversimplification of what is actually happening. You get much more complex models to describe the true behaviour of wood. I'm just describing the, the principle here.